Advanced placement, that sounds cool. Maybe I should just take that and slap it on a test and make people pay $100 to take it. That sounds like a great idea. Hello everybody, I'm Carr, and today we're going to be talking about AP classes and tests because they're pretty epic, they're pretty important, a lot of people want to take them. But are they really that worth it? That is a question. So even though my intro was talking about how they make you pay $100 to take a test, it's not really all that bad because there are some guaranteed benefits of AP classes and there are some other extra benefits to taking AP classes. In fact, I would say that they're net good, honestly. If you get to choose which AP classes you want to take, if you choose the ones that are good, then you're going to be having a really good experience by taking AP classes and tests. But unlike men, AP classes are not created equal. So, for that reason, we gotta discuss which AP classes are the best and whether or not you should take AP classes and tests in general. So the first thing we gotta talk about when we talk about AP classes is their general benefits, right? All AP classes have a certain benefit. So the first obvious reason why AP classes are so useful is because they give you a 5.0 GPA. So they're a massive GPA boost. And then, of course, they give you college credit and colleges like to see that you're doing high level classes and they have a certain level of rigor that prepares you for college. So those are all the generic benefits, right? Every single AP class that you could think of out there is going to give you these benefits. Every AP class gives you a 5.0 GPA, every single class is going to give you college level preparation, whatever that means. But now, should we take them or not? Is it worth it? Well, first we gotta consider the AP class we don't care about. Like, okay, I know I'm taking A push, but like, I cannot care less about US history. It's literally my least favorite subject ever. Like, bruh, I don't wanna spend 20 minutes no, not even 20. It's like an hour every day just reading about US history. Not fun. The reason I take it is because my school requires you to take uh, history in junior year, and you could either take AP US history or regular US history, and nah, -uh, if I'm gonna have to waste my time, I might as well waste it to get a better GPA, right? But of course, APs are a lot harder than normal classes, so you've gotta have a balance, right? So my philosophy is if taking the AP is gonna reduce your grade by two letters below what it would be if you took a lower level class, then don't take it. It's not worth it. Like, even if there's a tiny possibility of that happening, don't take it. So for example, if you're like pretty sure that you're gonna get an A in like regular uh, US history, but in AP US history, it's like very possible that you could get a C, then no, don't even think about it. Because like, it's not worth it. Because if you get a C in an AP class, that's just a 3.0 GPA, which is the same as getting a B in a lower level class. So you might as well just take the lower level class and get a better score on that. Now, honestly, the best way to like figure this out, whether or not you're gonna get a lower grade in an AP class is to try it out for like the first few weeks and drop it if it's too hard for you. And I know that not all schools let you do that, but if your school lets you do it, you should take advantage of it because it's better to t try it out, see whether it's too hard for you or too easy for you, and then decide which one's better based on that. Alright, so that's basically what you should do about AP that you don't really care about. Like, you don't have any specific interest or non-interest in them, but you're just like, I gotta take it, so should I take the regular version or the actual version? Alright, now it's time to talk about AP classes that we actually care about. And since you guys know that I'm not any type of humanities kind of guy by any stretch of the imagination, we're gonna talk about AP science classes. So now, AP science classes have a lot of benefits, right? Like, in college, you have to take sciences. Also, there's a lot of Olympiads that I like to do, and taking these AP classes could help with them. So let's go through them, one by one. Okay, ABCS, right? That is AP Computer Science. Unfortunately, not AP Common Sense. That would have been an epic AP, but AP Computer Science, unfortunately, is not as cool as it sounds. So the main benefit of ABCS is that it shows that you're interested in CS. You took a whole year-long class in high school just to learn CS. So that shows that you're actually interested in CS. But the class itself is literally just Java. It's learning the ins and outs of the Java language and trying to like read code, make yourself into a compiler. I don't think that's coding. I think that's just like being a compiler, boring. Like no one cares that you could read a piece of code line by line. You're never gonna have to do that ever again in your whole life. Like no, never, never, okay, you hear me? Never. It won't help you with Yusuko either because it doesn't teach you any algorithm whatsoever. Okay, I know I'm trashing it, my teacher was good, but like, the curriculum that the AP test requires is just like, not very useful at all. And then in, and then in college, they don't even use Java that much. So, literally all the stuff you learned in ABCS is essentially useless. Like, literally in like, the Berkeley course that will cover like, similar stuff, only one week was ABCS stuff, and then the remaining seven weeks were all new stuff that were completely unrelated. Alright, enough roasting ABCS, I think it's like a charbolt mushroom marshmallow or something right now, but... Yeah, that's what I think about AP says. Not a very useful AP, but 
it shows that you're interested and if you're interested in CS just take it because it's not it's one of the easier AP science classes and like yeah pretty epic. All right time for the infamous AP5. Okay the reason why it's infamous is because it's like so memorization focused it's a very heavy workload because you got to take a lot of notes read a lot of chapters it's kind of like A push in a way except it's science so I mean <laughs> uh, well, this is the A push that I like more. The good thing about AP Bio is that it's pretty brain dead, so you're not going to get demolished by like random concepts that you can't understand because it's pure memorization. You don't need to like have like a certain understanding of concepts. You don't need to apply concepts to problems. There's none of that to like troll you. Like in other classes, there might be some math concepts that you don't understand, and you're just going to completely fail the test if you don't understand a single concept. In Bio, it's not like that because as long as you're able to associate it in your head. You're fine. What's really nice about AP Bio, like I know it's like a bunch of brain dead work just writing notes and reading, but the good thing about it is that it's really good for preparing you for Usable and for preparing you for college bio. Because biology doesn't have like different difficulties. It has detailed and not detailed. So no matter what bio you learn in AP Bio, you're still learning stuff that can be applied in more advanced bio. Like the only thing that college is gonna add to your AP Bio stuff is maybe like an extra unit and like more specific protein names or something, but they're not gonna have like completely new concepts that you never learned before. So that's why AP Bio is a great AP, because even though it's like a lot of brain dead work, you still get a lot of out of it. It makes you better at Usabo. Like literally people who have just taken AP Bio and no other studying have made it to semifinal just by taking AP Bio, and you could use it in college because it helps you with college if you're interested in pre-med or anything like that. All right, AP Chem, here we come. So AP Chem is literally the best AP of them all. Like, best. Like, it's beautiful. Okay, first thing first, not memorization heavy, not concept heavy. It's a perfect mix of the two. So you basically got like equations that you have to memorize. You had to memorize like solubility rules and all that good jazz. But you also had to apply a little bit of math and a little bit of problem solving. But the problem solving is like not even that bad. So it's basically like half the workload of bio but like half the concepts of physics. What's also really nice is that a lot of the AP Chem curriculum overlaps with uh, US NCO, which is the Chemistry Olympiad. And if you're able to do well in AP Chem, you're probably gonna be do able to do well in US NCO. So just generally, if you're interested in science, AP Chem is like a really good thing. Just take it regardless of whether you're interested in physics, chem or bio, or whatever you're gonna do in college, just take AP Chem. It's super interesting. It's gonna be applied in college regardless of what you do. So might as well do it. Basically my teacher took chem in college so she like knows the college curriculum so she goes past the AP curriculum a little bit but really like a lot of the AP curriculum like overlaps with what she says like what she says is on the college curriculum. Alrighty now a lot of you guys have been leaving comments saying that you guys have taken AP physics and whether that will help you with EFMA. Let's talk about that right now. Alright so first off this is the hardest class conceptually. So if you're not good with physics concept, it's going to be super hard for you. But if you understand the concept, it's going to be super easy for you. So it's one of those things where it's like super polarized. There's people who do super well on tests and there's people who do really badly on tests. And the workload is not bad at all. Like the homework is just doing problems. But the problems with the problems is that sometimes when you get to the test, you have no idea how to do the problems, even though you're able to do all the homework questions. So I don't know, it's a hard class to get a good grade in, but it's an easy class in terms of the homework. But really, like, if you're able to understand the concepts, then AP Physics is a super, super useful, super useful AP, because it teaches you everything you need to know in F equals MA. So that's AP Physics 1. AP Physics 2 is a little bit less applicable to uh, F equals MA, but it, it's super useful in college, and if you get to use the phone, you could use your AP Physics 2 skills. So there's also, like, the calculus versions of AP Physics 1 and 2, and those are, like, a lot harder but that's also going to prepare you for college better now honestly i think the ab physics one and two without calculus don't prepare you for college at all so in that way it's not ideal but it's enough for evma so if you're interested in doing the physics olympiad ab physics one is like a super good foundation for that my physics teacher said that like college physics is way harder than any ap class and maybe he's trying to scare us but i don't know maybe you should take his advice What's cool about CE and M, like the calculus version, is that it lets you skip your college uh, physics, but my teacher recommended no, as you could probably tell. So, epic! That's all the sciences down! Okay, fine. You might be saying, well, you forgot APES. A-P-E-S. Unfortunately, that doesn't stand for uh, AP Earth Science, because that would actually be applicable to a, a Olympiad. Surprisingly enough, there's actually an Earth Science Olympiad. Damn. Pretty impressive. I just found about the, out about that this year, but like nobody in the world 
even takes it. But anyway, APES is AP Environmental Science. I heard that it's like really boring. Well, I mean, some people like it, but it's not applicable to any Olympiad. You're probably not gonna do it in college, I don't know. Well, if you're interested in like lugging around trash bags to show your teacher what trash you threw away yesterday, or if you're interested in like torturing like bugs inside a like bio bottle, then sure. But other than that, I would not recommend it unless you just want the grade boost or whatever. So Epic, we covered all the AP classes, we covered why you should take AP classes, we covered why you shouldn't take AP classes if they're too hard for you, do not take AP classes. Yeah, that's basically it. Epic! Alright, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you guys want any more of these tip types of videos, if you want like specific tips on something, just let me know down in the comments and I will make a video on them. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.